the torch from the momentum that they gained from last year's run in the NCAA tournament. The players that played key roles for this team a season ago, but now are stepping into those starring roles as we are underway on Saturday. If you were concerned if Central Jersey exists, all you need to do is look at Princeton and Monmouth to know we got a great matchup here in the Garden State. Uh, hoops in the Garden State the last few years. Some great runs in the NCAA tournament. Princeton and both of these teams are going to be high octane offense, Eddie. And yeah, Princeton, one of the more efficient offenses in the country, while Monmouth under King Rice wants to get up and down the floor and wants to run, sharing the basketball here. And the finish through contact for Nikita Konstantinovsky. Wow, what a great dish. And finish inside. The interior passing for the Hawks is always terrific. Speaking of tremendous ball movement, it's going to be fun to watch this Princeton team operate here on Saturday. Step back three, back of the rim for Martini. And the rebound to Mamet's second leading scorer, Jack Collins. Here we go, team. There is Jarrett Valencia, a redshirt freshman who shows a ton of ability for Mamet. Konstantinovsky, double. And Jakari Spence travels. Princeton will get it back. Well, Spence won too many steps before he puts the ball to the floor. Mammoth, great ball movement there on the perimeter. And Princeton does an excellent job of really packing it in on the defensive side. Really making it hard. We'll make it, try to make it hard for the Hawks to get any type of flow on the offensive going to the basket. That's been a rarity this year. Spence hasn't turned it over a whole lot. He has played a really nice role for King Rice playing the point guard, which has allowed Xander Rice, the transfer from Bucknell and King's son, to play that two guard position. Here's Valencia, tough shot in the lane. Collins skying for the offensive rebound. Kick out, Valencia will step out for three. That one way off, and the rebound tracked down by Matalaco. Well, both teams come up a little empty from three, and Princeton filing on the board as Alaco pulls up on the break. And puts the Tigers up by one. Double figures in all three games for Princeton this year. Matt Alaco, including going for 20 in two of those games, as Collins knocks down the three. And Jack Collins has been unconscious from deep, shooting 54%. You know, it's so funny you say that, Eddie. His name flows so well, his first to his last. It's almost like it becomes one word. Jack Collins. It flows so nice. <laughs> Here's Zavion lead of the basket, and what a finish for the sophomore from Toronto. Screen and roll, Konstantinovsky can't get the pass. And in a 5-5 game, Princeton will get it back. Yeah, you talk about Spence being very good, taking care of the ball. Second turn over there, a little bit uncharacteristic. The Tigers will now bring it up in this tie ball game. Well, he early. had two turnovers, Dave, the entire year coming in. He didn't turn it over at all in 32 minutes at West Virginia. Drive. Oh, blocked by Valencia. No. Tells Caden Pierce, not now. And Valencia is such a freak athletically. Konstantinovsky, too strong on the dunk. Alaco hesitation move and the foul as we'll keep it here Dave high-flying athletes well you talk about Caden Pierce who's quick off the ground but there you see Valencia even quicker let's take another look at this one whoa not in my house he'll take a seat but so impressive able to block shots with either hand is Valencia he's a red shirt freshman from Quidbo Colombia Checking in the 6'6 freshman from Willingboro, New Jersey, Boog Robinson from Amit. Hesitation, double clutch, too strong in the three for Blake Peters. And it'll go down the other way. Well, all five starters for the Tigers, Eddie, can shoot the three, and they can get on a roll and hit, it, hit them in bunches. Come off a little slow. The only three so far was Alaco in transition pulled up on the break. Within, the out, within their half-court offense, Tigers yet to drain a three. Xavier Lee will take a seat. Dalen Davis checks in for the first time. A freshman from Chicago. I get the feel like these two teams are just kind of 
feeling each other out right now in the early going. It'll stay this end of the floor. Monmouth will have 10 seconds to shoot. Dave, one of the things we've seen these first three minutes, Princeton going to double that post as Monmouth is sending runners through the lane. Yeah, you look at Princeton's defense, they really pack it in. Monmouth's first basket was on interior passing, but that's not going to happen as often against Princeton. They recover inside nicely. As you see, Pierce coming off. Made it tough there for Boog Robinson. Well, Monmouth but, had the right play drawn up. That high screen for Robinson just couldn't handle it. Princeton always known for spreading the floor. We mentioned all five starters can shoot from three. But much quicker on their offense than the days of the 90s, the days when Mitch Henderson was a player. Too strong on the shot. Rebound tipped down to Xander Rice. Outlet Collins. Extra pass in the corner to Spence. Jakari Spence to the rim. Gives Mammoth a two-point lead. Well, great take. Terrific body control. Absorbs the contact. And a nifty finish. You see Mammoth with quick ball movement. Wants to push the pace offensively. Here's Alaco, he and Martini, two-man game. Davis around the screen. Picks up the dribble, finding Martini to the basket, and Zach Martini will tie the game. Well, Martini. different type athletic play than Pence just we saw on the other end, but Martini able to go methodically to the rim, body control, and strong finish. Collins driving kick. Spence left alone for three. Here comes Dalen Davis in a 7-7 game. Spinning and losing it. Collins, Spence. Collins gonna pull up for three. Well, both teams like to shoot the three. Princeton, a big part of their half-court offense for the Hawks. Definitely in transition. Look to spot up around a three-point line. And that time, Caden Pierce is able to take it to the basket. Valencia on the bench. And Pierce finishes nicely. Well, Pierce, 6'7", 220. Ivy League Player of the Year last year. Here's Spence on the backdoor cut. Spence with two nice finishes around the rim. Good body control. So much of that Princeton offense runs through Pierce, runs through Alaco, who controls on the wing. Two-man game. Martini way off on that attempt. Here comes Xander Rice. Mammoth's leading scorer, the fifth leading scorer in the nation, has yet attempt to a shot so far in the game. As he gets to the basket, and right on cue, Xander Rice, his first bucket gives Mammoth the lead. He heard you in his ear, Eddie. He <laughs> takes it to the rim. Nice finish. He's been... Very efficient on the offensive end. 50% from the floor, 50% from three-point range, and that big win against West Virginia. Davis too strong on a three, and both Konstantinovsky and Robinson go to the glass. It'll stay with Princeton as we step out. Mammoth an early 11-9 lead in this all-New Jersey matchup. Average. More points than both of those teams scored in that game back in 2005. So it's just two different styles from over the years that have changed. But both of these teams to score already. Not too far removed in this rivalry from a 96-90 game. That was here in the Ocean First Bank Center. But you got to go back through the eras, right? Ed Persia hitting an 80-footer to give Princeton a win. I was a freshman during that game, by the way. So, Eddie, I remember that game was not on TV. It was in Boylan Gym, and afterwards, I, in the press conference, I said, well, at least I don't have to see this on Sports Center tonight. <laughs> and then, sure enough, I go home, and Princeton sent in their own footage from up on top in Boylan Gym. Yeah, you could see the batting cages <laughs> up, up top. <laughs> it was, And, of course, it made the number one play tonight. Cut to the basket and a finish for Clemen Vuga. That's a nice look from freshman Boog Robinson. When we talk about Princeton's defense, they like to pack it in. They're going to double on the post. And then when the double on the post comes is when that interior passing can be effective. Hawks have already scored twice on that. Yeah, Mammoth's best offense in this game so far has been 
that unselfish play, cutting to the basket. Now, Princeton normally an incredibly efficient team. They shoot 38% from three. Dave, they are one for eight to start this one. Yeah, and the only three was in transition where Alaco pulled up. They're 0 for 7 within the half-court offense, and it is a big part of the Tiger offense. Sophomore Jack Scott has checked in for Princeton. Xavier Lee has checked back as well. Oh, Pierce with the right hand to tie the game. Well, Caden Pierce has just has such a quick jump to the basket. That's why he's also a great rebounder. First of all, he has a knack for rebounding. But his quickness off the floor is his really led to his rebounding prowess and his ability to get to the rim and finish quickly. The Princeton's also checked in 6'8 freshman Jacob Huggins. Rice's pass intercepted. Here's Lee. He'll pull up for three in transition. Big Here's rebound, Lee. Robinson. Here's Rice changing speeds in transition. Xander Rice. Loose ball. Collins pulls it down. No look down low. Robinson makes it 15-13. Wow, oh, a great offensive rebound by Jack Collins. And the dish, his second offensive rebound already this afternoon. And the Hawks program's knocking off high major. It creates an excitement that both, both teams have been able to do that. But the history in this rivalry has been great. Talked about some of the games already. Mammoth, the very first time we've ever beat Princeton was 1995, and that propelled to go lead that team to their first ever NCAA tournament appearance in 1996. And then also, we talked about the 05 game where it was a low scoring game. That team also went to the NCAA tournament, and in 2000, we knocked off Princeton as well, and then went to the tournament no one. It seemed like forever, for a while there, it was like, if Monmouth is able to knock off Princeton in non-league play, we're going to the NCAA tournament that year. Yeah, and it's been funny to see that. You know, Princeton has the 14-7 all-time series lead, but the, the Monmouth wins that dot the rivalry seem to be, like you said, in very significant years. It's a foul! Years. It's a foul! Well, and very good Princeton teams as well. You talk about the 96 team. That was Mama's first ever trip to the NCAA tournament. Earlier in that day, we were about to play Marquette. Earlier in that day is when Princeton knocked off UCLA with the big backdoor layup. Gabe Llewellis knocks it in. Gabe Llewellis, the sister, played at Mammoth. And obviously Mitch was the guard on that team as well. Mammoth building a four-point lead. Here is a baseline drive. Martini, kick out, Scott. Three off the front of the rim. Martini rebound, and he's fouled. And Jack Scott just come up empty on that three. The son of former Princeton coach Joe Cut Scott was an assistant on that 90 16, was assistant here at Monmouth as well. Now the head coach at Air Force. See Martini hitting the glass as Princeton continues to struggle from deep, but maybe this can be something that they use, get to the free throw line where they shoot almost 80% as a team. Very good, always, Princeton, at the fundamentals. Making layups, making free throws. They're, very ex they're an excellent three-point shooting team, but, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have off days where Princeton has started out slow, but right now, right in this game, only trailing by three. Well, and the fact that they're only down three, and now two, despite shooting one for 11 from beyond the arc, Mitch Henderson, you know, would sign for that. Exactly. Mitch Henderson said before the game, they're three and zero, and he feels really good about his team. But he said, Mom is a very good team as well. Even though they lost to George Mason, he felt like it seemed that they actually played better in the George Mason game than the West Virginia game. Quite the statement he made pre-game as freshman Abdi Bashir knocks down the three. He's now made a triple in all three games to start his college career for Mammoth. Five-point Mammoth lead. Excellent first half so far between the Hawks and the Tigers. Pull up two. Good. That is Matt Alaco. And that's what Mitch Henderson was talking about, the senior leadership between Martini and Alaco. Last possession, Princeton not scoring well. Martini gets the rebound. And that time, Alaco hits the pull-up. And speaking of the pull-ups, there's Buka getting into some action as he hits a little elbow check. And that initiated with Xander Rice going old school down to the block to initiate offense. You love when the guards go old school. And Triple buried by Blake Peters. And there's Princeton's 
first three in the half court offense. Here's Rice finding Jaden Doyle back door. And Lee with the rebound. Doyle lost a shoe as he'll trail the play as Monmouth will go five on four. That triple too strong from Peters. And here comes Rice. Navigating and a blocking foul will be called on Xavier Lee. Well, great defensive try there by Lee. Anticipated where Rice was going. Was unable to establish his position, so picks up the block. Dan the Rice is going to we'll take another look at it. You see Lee anticipates, but never quite set. The bang, bang play, but never quite set. Rice going to take a seat, get a little rest. You know, I think that spin move at the end is what really earned Xander Rice that call. If he would have just kept going straight, that might have been a charge. Agreed. And you mentioned it, Rice will sit down. You know, he averages 25 and a half a game, just two points in the early going. And like we said, Princeton would sign for being down two despite struggling from three. Mamet's up two, and Xander Rice only has two points, Dave, so maybe it's balancing each other out. Yeah, this game's already got an early flow, Eddie, of really just a lot of offense. There we go! You know, if one team gets hot, they can maybe start to pull away, but it's got a feel of back and forth. A lot of exciting play. Some great athleticism. Martini outlet to Pierce. He's going to wait for his teammates to join him. And a two-point Mammoth lead. Lee fouled. Doyle got him. And that will get us to another media timeout. Mammoth 22, Princeton 20. 7.50 to go in the first half from West Long Branch. Bring you back, Dave Calloway, Eddie Acapinti, your crew. Two-point game here in the first half, Dave. Up and down, some good offense, good play, great athleticism. Princeton a little cold from beyond the arc. Only trail by two. Yeah, Princeton just two for 13 from beyond the arc. Tigers have brought Jack Scott back in. Pierce to the up fake. Oh, he's so patient. A good defense. The shot clock down to three. Lee sees it. Hoist one up. Oh, and he gets the roll. Xavier Lee gives Princeton a one-point lead. Well, that's only Princeton's third made three of the afternoon. One in transition, one in the half court, and that one with the shot clock running down from about 30 and the friendly bounce. Mammoth has brought Nikita Konstantinovsky back in. No Xander Rice this possession. Bashir. Left-handed pass over to Spence. He'll put up the floater. A big offensive rebound by Konstantinovsky. Who, now a turnover from Spence. Scott in the open floor. Good contest from Collins. Way to go, Jack! Well, Jack Scott comes up empty on the left because of the defense by Jack Collins. Konstantinovsky shot. No good. And a whistle will send it down. They're going to say Collins for over the back. As Princeton will get it back with 6.34 to go before halftime. Well, here we go with the shot clock running down. Lee recognizes the shot right on line, a little long. Ball goes straight up in the air and right through the hoop. That ball left our shot. It left the camera shot. It went so high off of the rim. Tigers lead 23-22. Lee, the backdoor cut, and he'll go to the line. A couple of free throws coming. Well, we Xavier talked earlier Lee. about that 96 win, the famous backdoor layup against Princeton, against UCLA, I should say, by Princeton. A call backdoor look. There, Princeton getting the backdoor play just off the natural flow of their offense. There's such a good three point threat. Where the backdoor cut used to be a big part of the Princeton offense, now it's just a natural flow of their offense because they're so uh, sharp beyond the beyond the arc, and they spread the floor so well. It allows those lanes for the backdoor cuts and be able to catch and get to the basket and get fouled. Yeah, he's having a great sophomore season. Is Xavier Lee a career high 20 in their win against Duquesne last time out? And Princeton's three wins. We highlighted Rutgers, but. 
the Duquesne and the Hofstra wins are impressive. Each team expected to be really good in their league. Monmouth fans know Hofstra well as being one of the best teams in the CAA. Yeah, they finished actually, the, they won the CAA regular season last year. Were knocked off in the semis of the CAA tournament. Come on, come on. Oh, great ball movement by the Tigers. Pierce, Kink by the three. But yeah, each win kind of more impressive than the last. Yeah, and, and actually Mitch Henderson talked about it as well. Monmouth one and one, beating the high major West Virginia, but he felt like the George Mason game, they looked better, and George Mason is just better than West Virginia. Yeah, the Mountaineers right now are struggling, no doubt, but a big win for Monmouth. Nonetheless, here's Lee. When you talk about the West Virginia alum, Eddie, I got a few work colleagues that are West Virginia alum. They were a little salty last Saturday. <laughs> the texts were flying. Did you just send around a, a hawk emoji and then that was the end of it? There was a lot of smiles on my picture page, for sure. And more good Collins hustle that led to now this possession for Mammoth. Hawks down three, and they've gone cold. They've missed their last seven, and they turn it over. Pierce, the pitch. Lee, able to get inside, hang in the air, and can't get it to fall. Offensive rebound by Huggins and a foul. We're going to call that foul on Konstantinovsky as we take another look. At the start of the game, both teams come out. The offenses were flowing pretty early. Not shooting the ball great, but still being able to score. Seems like the game has settled in a little bit. Would have thought maybe a little bit more on the point side from both teams. I think maybe credit the defenses and the extra effort. Both teams playing at high energy. You know, Princeton on an extended run as that's their first missed free throw in the game. But they've outscored Monmouth 9-0 the last four minutes to now build a four-point lead. Yeah, before this run, the Hawks had the biggest lead of the game for themselves, and now Princeton with their biggest lead of the game. Konstantinovsky lost it. Look at a lock -up. Hit the ground. It'll stay on this end of the floor. Princeton being pesky defensively as Konstantinovsky will take a seat. And Clemen Vuga will check back in. There is Rice, averaging 25 and a half a game, the leading scorer in the CAA. Good defense. Pierce dropping down to intercept the Vuga pass. Lee, Alaco. Good transition defense by Mamet as Lee will go back to the line. And that's where Princeton Davis really keyed this comeback run as they'll go to the line with 435 remaining in the first. Yeah, such smart play, right? Not making threes, only three on the afternoon out of 15 attempts. We talked about early on, they were one for eight at one point. Not shooting the ball well from three. Let's see if we can get to the free throw line where we're very good. And you know what else that does, Eddie, for shooters as well? Just seeing the ball go into the hoop. So now you start getting that confidence. You see the free throw go in. Now, all of a sudden, you get an open three, and you finally start knocking them down. And King Rice looks on in his 13th season at Monmouth. Princeton run has been a deliberate one, and now sees the Tigers of 28-22. You know, Mitch Henderson talked to Eddie to us as well that while Monmouth loves to go up and down and score and play high octane, Princeton can really flex their style to whoever they're playing. They, But they do prefer the up and down style. They're just not that deep, so he's always a little wary of that. Well, all five Princeton starters average over 30 minutes a game. No one else after that group is over 10 minutes a game. As Rice gets it to fall, as Xander Rice, four points in the first half. He kind of did this against West Virginia. Let the game come to him before he exploded for 30 in that win. Good pass. Lee, three, too strong. 
And Collins all over the glass. His fifth rebound already. Yeah, you talk about Rice. Very comfortable letting the game come to himself. And excellent at that as well, going to the basket. He's got great three-point range. And Rice takes us to the basket. He's going to go over with his teammates, talk it over. And they're going to come out and try. With his son dominating the game, by far the best player on the floor that night. Yeah, to score a 1,000 points at Bucknell and then transfer to Monmouth to play for your father, it's quite the story around Xander Rice and the Rice family. If he does, if he doesn't score another point this season, the 30 points in the win at West Virginia kind of makes it all worthwhile. Now, here's the thing. Xander Rice is going to score a lot of points for Mammoth this season. But to have that moment in game two is pretty special. Yeah, it's a great father-son moment. You know, Xander talked about his ability to have an extra year and come and play for his dad. He's got his younger brother, Julian, be able to come see him play. A lot easier ride right over here in West Long Branch as opposed to going out in the Lewisburg, PA. Princeton breaking that three-quarter court pressure from Mammoth. Zach Martini's three makes it 31-26. As Jack Collins earns a trip to the free-throw line with the drive. And Jack Collins, his game really starting to come into his own. Had a very good freshman year. But his ability to shoot the three, but he's got size and athleticism. He hits the glass. Plays with a tenacious way about himself anywhere near the rim and all rookie pick in the caa last season collins 17 points 10 rebounds and that win over west virginia he and xander rice combined for 42 of Mamet's 67 points per game and we talk about his ability to hit the offensive glass and oh almost took a free throw miss to a three, Xander Rice just off the mark. Four point Princeton lead, Matalaco. Vuga picks him up on the switch, now Pierce. Pierce, cross court look, Martini. And went off the front of the rim and Vuga tracks it down. Here is Rice. Vuga operating on Pierce. And Martini tips the rebound to himself. Oh, what a great move by Vuga. Just actually short-armed it on the jump hook. Here's Pierce bullying his way down low. Caden Pierce makes it 33-27. And that's where Caden Pierce, his quickness off the floor is just so hard to guard. Earlier on, Valencia was able to get him, but that has been it. Other than that, Pierce has been really great around the rim. You know, Pierce looks like he could maybe play tight end, right? Well, his brother, Alec, plays for the Indianapolis Colts as a wide receiver. Yeah, and you talk about some of the great NFL players or NFL tight ends who were college division one basketball players. And Princeton's got a good football team. Pierce would fit right in there as Rice draws the charge on a locko and that's a big defensive play with just under two minutes left in the first great anticipation there by rice able to establish a good stop they get a lot going to push off at the arm you see it right there easy call for the official anytime an offensive player extends their arm you're going to get the hand behind the head mama ball if princeton has checked in jackson hickey for the first time the freshman from radnor pennsylvania will get some time Valencia's check back for Mammoth. Minute 40 to go. First half, Tigers up by six. Rice picks up his dribble. The shot clock winding down, just had to throw it up on the rim. And now here come the Tigers. Yeah, Rice actually had the defender in the air. He probably could have drew contact and a foul then. But at the time, didn't realize the shot clock was running down so low. And once he realized it, he had to force one. Pierce being guarded by Mammoth Jack Holmstrom, a senior from Rockford, Illinois. Pierce gets it to fall. Caden Pierce puts Princeton up eight. And King Rice is going to call timeout. Dave, as Mammoth has gone cold offensively, and it's allowed the Tigers to take their largest first half lead. And Coach Rice going to talk it over. And doing a nice job carving out his own space in the Pierce family. 
Ivy League Rookie of the Year last year and poised for a big sophomore year. You mentioned pregame. That game he had against Hofstra, a Princeton Tiger hasn't done in almost 50 years. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. You, you know, Roma, that's a name back in, in the history of Princeton. And there you see Caden Pierce able to knock that pass away. Lee in transition, can't finish. Great job by Hickey to keep it for the Tigers. Lee's three, off the rim. Pierce gets the offensive rebound, and he'll put it in plus one. And Caden Pierce really asserting himself late in the first half. Well, we've just been talking about him, and now, apropos, he's able to get the rebound in traffic, and that's with Valencia fighting with him. The presence of mind of the pump fake and the finish. And we just talked about the stat. Bob Roma was the last player, and Pierce's stat was 26 points and 15 rebounds against Hofstra. The last person to do that was Bob Roma in the, seven, in the 70s. There's been so many great players that have been through playing at Jadwin Gym. You think about that, that's, just, that's amazing. Well, that's where he did that against Seton Hall in another in-state game. Second big Tigers run, pushing that lead to 11. There's Collins, Valencia, and Mammoth has really struggled around the rim, Dave, in the latter part of this first half. And it feels like Princeton's defense has just been able to step it up a notch, especially around that rim. Pierce, Martini. Oh, and there's Pierce, can't finish that one. Collins' touchdown pass will fall short. And that will get us to the end of the first half as Princeton ends on a 7-0 scoring run to take an 11-point lead. And the lock teams tend to come out and start that second half with a strong burst. And for that, that's going to be Xander Rice and Jack Collins to get these Hawks going. I appreciate you joining Dave and I. A little pre-Thanksgiving appetizer between these two. It's a great time of year with all those in-season tournaments as Princeton turns it over on the first possession. But I, I feel like this is the week and the weekend where the rest of the nation goes, oh, that's right, college basketball is going on, even though we've been doing games for a few weeks. Yeah, and you have some of those great tournaments over the Thanksgiving break. Mammoth used to play in the MAC, and the MAC conference sends a team down to Orlando for the tournament where the Hawks had some of those great wins when they participated. There's been some great mid-major wins in those tournaments. You go back to, you got the Alaska shootout, the Maui Open. So some great college basketball tournaments coming up in the next week. The Monmouth will play in one of those tournaments down in Philadelphia right after the Thanksgiving holiday. Here's a Locko, kick out Peters off the side rim, but Pierce all over the glass again. When well, the rebounding was even when we looked at those stats, the two really key stats other than the runs we spoke about was Princeton able to get to the free throw line and the turnovers on Mammoth. Wow, what a great play by Matt Alaco. He was caught in the air and threw it off of Valencia. All those little things that saves a possession for Princeton, they all five to shoot. And it goes from a turnover to an opportunity to get a shot off, maybe score or get an offensive rebound and continue your possession. Oh, and Alaco converts. The three makes it 41-27. And the same player who would have got his shot thrown into the stands by Valencia is able to knock down a deep three. He joins Pearson double figures and Matt Alaco, who's shooting an unbelievable percentage this year, 57% from deep. Gives Princeton a double, extends its double figure lead. Here is Collins, stripped but fouled. Peters will pick up his second foul. They're going to call that on the floor. No, Collins will go to the free throw line. So they get him on the continuation. Mitch Henderson calling for that to be on the floor, but Jack Collins will get two. Talk about unbelievable percentages. The year that Collins is off to, he came into play today shooting 59% overall and 54% from three. Efficiency between in the backcourt. Really, the Hawks play with three guards. Pence, the point guard, and deliver delivery man to Xander Rice and Jack Collins. 
who are playing at a high efficiency clip. Collins goes one out of two, a 13 point Princeton lead. It's, it's cliche, but Princeton even better with a lead than most teams because of how patient they can be. And then they get a block foul there. Look, maybe on Spence. Yep. It'll go on the senior, his second foul. Specialty plays, too, always known for Princeton to get quick shots and good shots. And now they get Jack Collins on a foul. So the foul is quickly mounting up here to start the second half. And that's not something you want to do for the Hawks. Princeton so efficient from the free throw line. Well, that's why Princeton with a lead is so dangerous. Take care of the ball. They hit free throws. Pierce and one. Caden Pierce a chance for another three-point play. And he is, Dave, taking over this game. Yeah, we talked to Mitch Henderson. Why oh, is he so good? And King two. Rice wants to bring the family out for a nice Saturday. I got to bring, got to bring the little guy next time. Come out and watch New Jersey hoops on a Saturday afternoon. Not a bad place to be. And if you're a Mama fan, you Coach Rice, you want your Hawks to come out, start strong to start the second half, and Princeton picking up right where they left off with that 7-0 run going into halftime and building on that 11-point lead. Yeah, Mammoth now in need of offense. And here is Xander Rice with the Hawks down 44-28. It's being guarded closely by Alaco. Robinson will try a three. Does get his own rebound. Down low, Konstantinovsky to the spin move. Double team comes. Princeton being feisty defensively. Rice bumped. And that, a bit of a bailout as Alaco picks up his second foul. That's also a heady play by Rice, recognizing the shot clock going down. Able to draw the contact. And the last possession down below when the ball went inside. Martini did a terrific job defensively. Princeton's done an excellent job on their interior defense in particular. Here's Rice. Backing down Lee. He finds Robinson, who had the chance to set the feet and knock down the three. Well, you talked about that in the first half. Xander Rice going a little old school. Guard posted up down low. He actually draws the double. He sees that coming easily. And Boog Robinson able to get off. Nothing but nylon on the three. Scott right hand dribble over to Martini. Now Pierce. Stop on a dime. Kick out. Martini to beat the shot clock. And Collins with the rebound. Trying to open up Mammoth offensively here in the second. Floats it up to Vuga, who will go to the line. What a great pass there and feed by Jack Collins. Recognized Vuga had his Princeton defender on his back. Leads him perfectly. He can go up. Vuga draws the contact. You know, another way to get back into a game, Eddie, is to be able to get to the free throw line as we see the feed here. Vuga able to catch, get Martini on his back, draw the contact. Now you have to knock those free throws down. They're, they're extra important when you're trailing when, so you can get back into a game. We talked about it in the first half, Eddie. That's how Princeton built early, was able to get to the free throw line. They were not hitting from beyond the arc. They were able to get the ball down low, draw some contact, get to the free throw line. First free throws of the year for Clement Vuga. Still making his way back into regular playing time from an off-season back injury. Lee into the front court, hanging. Martini, Pierce. Caden Pierce to the basket. Put it in, good, plus one. And Caden Pierce continues his onslaught in the paint. And it looked like Robinson was set. Be interesting, maybe his foot was inside. Because they can maneuver themselves around 
the defender. Well, and Pierce is such an interesting case. You know, 6'7", 220, and just a sophomore from Illinois. But he looks, he kind of plays older than that. And he's, you know, kind of old school, undersized, big, but he's a wing. He's a very interesting player. Got long arms, strong player. Yeah, I like the, the, the comparison of the old school style along with the quickness and athleticism and the ability to so quickly explode off the rim and quickly get to the rim. People do not realize they always think of basketball and those who dunk as athletic and able to jump high. But it's actually that quickness and explosiveness to get up so fast is hard to defend. A strong drive from Rice. And he'll look for his first points here in the second. Quiet first half against George Mason to begin Xander Rice's Mammoth career was 0 for his first eight, and since then has just been unconscious. He was eight of 18, shooting threes since that moment. After that first little blip to his Mammoth career, shooting over 50%, and the Hawks down 11 now. Dave going to need a big second half from Xander. Yeah, and he's only taken six shots so far. They're able to get to the free throw line and four for four from the charity stripe. But for the Hawks to get the ba back into this game, they're going to need Xander Rice to have the ball in his hands a lot. Good Tigers ball movement. Lee, kick out. Alaco to beat the shot clock. Well, and how often did we see that in March of 2023? 2023 is starting to shape up to be a really good year for Mitch Henderson and the Princeton Tigers. Rice back the other way with the left hand, and he'll make it 49-37. And right on cue with Rice, we talk about the ball is going to need to be in his hand. Maybe every possession the rest of the way if the Hawks are going to get back into this game. Lee, Pierce, baseline drive, blocked by Vuga. Mammoth trying to run. Spence, Rice, Collins, three. Here yeah. comes Dalen Davis. Lee, the spin move, nicely done, and a foul. Yeah, they're going to get a foul on the Hawks. I'll tell you, in transition there, if that three went down by Collins, I think you might have saw a timeout from Mitch Henderson because the crowd was really trying to get back into it. That would have made it a single-digit game. Instead, Princeton comes down another foul by Monmouth. Yeah, and Rice making the, the good, unselfish play, right? Get that extra pass in the corner. And Collins has been hitting threes this season team struggling from distance so far in this game just three for 11. Yeah when I talk about Rice having the ball in his hands that doesn't mean he has to take the shot because the Hawks are trying to create a turnover. Ooh, a little Lee, feistiness here. Lee and Robinson get tangled up. It'll be Mammoth possession on the alternate possession as they quietly and slowly separate everybody. Yeah and you can see a little feistiness really trying to get out of the pile there. You also see the sportsmanship right afterwards as Robinson was able to help Lee up. I think that goes back to the respect these two coaches have for each other as well. King Rice talks about the respect that Mitch Henderson of what he's been able to accomplish at Princeton in his 13 years here and obviously what he was able to do last year in general. Rice to the rim. Offensive foul as Vuga pushed off. You're starting to see though, Dave, and I think it's interesting, right? Xander Rice can really get into the paint and gets to the rim. I don't want to say easily, but he's got a real skill for that. And he does it with control as well. So there's a quickness to it and athleticism, but a body control. And then an awareness of what's around him as he's getting to the rim. He sees another defender coming. He sees a lane or a passing lane to a teammate or a kick out. And he's also able to control his body and finish as well. Alaco lost it. Here comes Jakari Spence. He'll go to the basket. Good finish for Spence. Oh, you talking about body control. How about Spence on that one? And those are the type of plays the Hawks need to make. Get out in transmission. They're picking up a little full court pressure here. Trying to get this crowd into the game. Spence up to six points. Mammoth trying, like you said, turn up the intensity. Peters fouled. 
They'll get Vuga for fouling Blake Peters at the rim with 13-21 remaining. Well, Vuga got all ball up top. Might have got a little too much body down below. We'll take another look at it here. As you see the take in Vuga, that's all ball, but he gets him with the hip check down below. And Princeton, who was ultra efficient from the free throw line in the first half. Blake Peters hit, misses the first here. Mamet has checked in. Abdi Bashir. Peters gets the second one to fall, 50 to 39. Another big possession here for the Hawks. We talked about the runs by Princeton in the first half. Part of that was Mammoth having empty offensive possessions. Wasn't really the turnovers that created that. Here's Rice again to the basket. Can't get the roll. We're going to take it. Looked like Rice was maybe thinking about trying to make a dish, but didn't have a passing lane and kind of forced it a little bit. Bit of a wild shot from Davis as we go back the other way. Rice changing speed. He'll go to the rim again, and he'll earn the foul call. That's just awareness and some veteran awareness there. King Wright, oh, Xander Rice, I'm saying, has been playing this game for a long time. And the recognition, he just took one in to the basket, didn't get a call. Here in transition, a little hesitation where he maybe the defender thought he was going to pull up, and then he realized he had him on his heels. Let me get to the rim here. I'm either going to finish or I'm going to get a call. An excellent free throw shooter as well. Yeah, like you said, to recognizing, you know, it just happened the previous time down. And we mentioned his great career before he ever came to Mama, the 1,000 points at Bucknell two-time team captain and all-league player he left there as an 84 percent free throw shooter that's top five all time at bucknell and pretty good start to this year just 93 percent from the free throw line that's almost as good as you <laughs> i'll tell you he, he he's going to get a quick rest here and, and i i mean probably ultra quick as he's been able to help mama get back into this game and make it now a single digit game i imagine he's going to take a seat Grab some water. Coach Rice is going to use the 12 minute timeout, media timeout. He'll be right back in. Another turnover here. Book here Robin, come the Hawks. Book Robinson with the steal. Here is Bashir. That's a wild shot from Abdi Bashir. And we go the other way. A lock up. Crossover move. Lost it on the way up, but a foul. It'll get called for the first time. We see the sophomore Gabe Spinelli, the transfer from Evansville, will send Matt Alaco to the free throw line. Spinelli played 30 games a season ago at Evansville. Transferred a little closer to home in Worcester, Massachusetts. Ooh, Alaco off the front of the rim. He does not miss many free throws. Came in an 83% shooter. And yeah, nor do the Tigers miss many free throws. They were 8 for 9 in the first half. But missed two so far here in the second. They would have hit the second one. I would I would disagree with that sign. I think Princeton's properly rated as one of the best teams in the country. We're starting off three and zero, and played three really good teams. I think teams that you're going to see playing into March. Robinson, good move for Boog Robinson, and it's 51-43. Yeah, this Monmouth crowd dying to get into this game. The Hawks can get a stop here. It has been a few times in the second half where you could you could feel the crowd wanting to get into it. And each time Princeton has had an answer, as they do here from Blake Peters. You're exactly right, Eddie. On, spot on with the answer. feel like every time the Hawks can get that lead down, Princeton hits with a dagger. The star of their win in last year's round of 32 against Missouri, Blake Peters, and makes it 54-43. And now gets the outlet pass after the Collins miss. Eleven ten remaining. The Tigers lead, holding at eleven. Pierce 
had it knocked away. Robinson playing a very good second half. Yeah, on both ends of the floor, and anytime you make a defensive play like that on Caden Pierce, we do not see that often. Collins, pull up. And an offensive foul as Mammoth has also checked in Amon Sandu, the 7-1 sophomore, who's the guilty party of this whistle. Mammoth down a percentage. And it's not like you're just taking a few shots. You know, he is going to be a key focus for the Hawks and a key focus for defenses night in and night out. Alaco gets the first free throw to fall. Princeton lead is held pretty steady. Mammoth a couple times has gotten it into single digits. The Tigers have had answers each time, and the roll on the second makes it a 13-point game. Yeah, we talked about that. You kind of feel like during the NCAA tournament run last year, they had leads in games, and then it, you know, playing some Missouri and top teams that would make a run, and then Princeton would answer every time with a dagger. And this game's got to feel like the Hawks are right around that double digit, right around that 10-point mark. Can we get it down to single digits? And every time they do, Robinson, the putback dunk. Woo! Princeton has answered after that, but how about that answer there by Book Robinson? He is playing a phenomenal second half on both ends of the floor. Nearing the midway point of the second. Alaco going to pull up from the free throw line. Konstantinovsky the rebound. Great defense there by Jack Collins. The Hawks can get something going here. This crowd will get into it. And there you go. Abdi Bashir from deep, and it's an eight-point game. This is where Mitch Henderson has complete faith in his team. The Hawks trying to make a run. The crowd trying to get it into it. He doesn't feel he needs a timeout yet. Martini, the big man. Step out, answer for three. And there you go. We've been talking about that all game. We just spoke about that. Every time the Hawks make a little run. It's a big time drive by Gabe Spinelli back and forth now. And this game's starting to open up now with both teams getting a little back and forth. Yeah, for a while, it just felt like Princeton just didn't let Mammoth get out and go. And making shots has something to do with that. Kick out. Peters, too strong. Here's Collins. Oh, and a whistle on this end of the floor. As Jack go, Collins Jack. got the rebound, he's going to now get his shoe that fell off. So to get the timeout. But how about Boog Robinson? Woo! Yes. Take another look at it. It is so good. Let's take another look. The follow-up goes up high. Once, twice, all three times it looks good, Eddie, from every view. Into single digits. Mammoth trying to continue its recent hot streak. They've made three in a row. Peter switches off on Rice. Xander Rice getting inside and he's fouled. They're going to get Peters for the foul and now this is going to become an issue for Princeton. All five Tigers on the floor, Dave, this possession had three fouls. It's going to be the fourth on Peters who will have to sit down. And the next foul will put Mammoth at the free throw line. Both teams now in the bonus. So any fouls will be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Deflected around a few times. Lee comes away with it. Xavier Lee leading the break behind the back. Big time rebound there by Constanova. Here's Rice navigating around. Konstantinovsky's putback is missed. And Alaco rips the rebound away in a nine-point game. Uh, Hickey gets caught. Lee with a great cut to the basket. Every time 
Monmouth makes it a single-digit game. Princeton has an answer. Yeah, and it looked like they had Hickey under wraps there defensively in trouble, and all of a sudden the cut, and Lee able to finish. Collins, tough shot. Seven and a half to go. Princeton up 11. Go defense! Tigers content to be patient. Building that lead. Pierce up fake and he's fouled. Konstantinovsky got him. And that 11 point Princeton lead will take us to break. A lot of Hawks have Hickey under trouble. But there you go, another patented cut. But really, is it quickness to get up and get rebounds and get to the rim? There, most players, that's a charge, but because he's able to maneuver his body, he's able to not only draw the foul, avoid the charge, and finish. I think it's more just whenever, you know, you identify the player we need to highlight, you and Andrew talk, and you know that guy's going to have a big game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to do when they're really that good. <laughs> A couple of free throws for Pierce, who's up to 18 and 10. Another double-double. Rice has his shot blocked by Xavier Lee. That's the second three-point attempt shot by the Hawks that the Princeton Tigers have been able to get a hand on. Jack Collins earlier in the corner off the base on out-of-bounds play. Now Princeton's offense historically gets all the credit, right? The Princeton offense, which this team runs parts of, but not entirely. But it's their defense where maybe they really make the biggest difference. They're just so sound fundamentally as Jack Scott, the former great player at Princeton, Joe Scott, and coach, son, wearing the Princeton Tiger black and orange. Rice will try to answer or finish with the left hand. But that's what we talked about earlier, Eddie. His ability to get to the rim and control his body and finish. He can dish. He can go to his left. He can go to his right. He'll also go to his left and then come back and finish with his right. That's him all the way right with the left-handed scoop. 13-point Tigers lead. Here's Lee. 11 points, 8 rebounds for Lee. That shot's off the mark. Tipped out. Who's going to get it? It's Jack Collins. Spence, Valencia, Pierce with good hustle. Knocked it away. And once again, Caden Pierce able to get to the ball quicker than Valencia. Knocks it away. And the Tigers come back with the ball. And Valencia has spent a lot of this game on the bench in foul trouble. Well, every time the Hawks have made a little mini run, the Tigers have been able to answer, especially if... Mom has been able to get close to 10, and there you go, another answer by Lee. 16-point Princeton lead after the three from Xavier Lee. Now, Princeton, their act this year to follow up the Sweet 16 bid last year might even be more impressive because everyone knows what you did a season ago. And to be 3-0 and and 4 minutes and 48 seconds away from 5-0, I don't think people realize, and if they don't, they're just not paying attention, how good this Tigers team is. It's a good point, Eddie, too. His ball's going to go out and be the Tiger ball. Coming off a sweet 16 run, then that also creates higher expectations. And Mitch Henderson said he wasn't sure what was going to come back into this team. He lost some key players from last year's squad. But he credited Matt Alaco and Zach Martini, the two seniors, to carry over the same mentality of never taking a play off and playing with a high energy every play. That's what carried them through the Sweet 16 last year, and that's what started them off to an undefeated record so far this year. Yeah, the New Jersey run of NCAA tournament success these last few years, it's amazing. It's been awesome. And you think about it, New Jersey basketball is better and, and the two high major programs in Seton Hall and Rutgers are better. Rutgers making the NCAA tournament. What Steve Peichel has been able to do there has been terrific. But then you think about the St. Peter's run. Who would have thought that the winner of the Mammoth St. Peter's game would go to the Final Eight that year? Yeah. 
That's right? a great point. After they played a great final. Yes. And therefore, you know, Shaheen Holloway, which was probably the worst kept secret in basketball, moving on to Seton Hall, that was done before that run. And then you look at last year, three more wins in the NCAA tournament by mid-major New Jersey programs, and Princeton getting two of them, and FDU from the NEC getting the upset win over Purdue. Well, this has been a great New Jersey game, but especially if you're a Tigers fan, as they lead by 18. Got a simple catch and finish, and an easy deuce. Well, there's there's beauty in the simplicity, like you you've talked about, whether it's defense, whether it's the extra pass or a cut. I, I just can't believe it's 2023, and the same things we're talking about with Princeton basketball has been relevant forever. You just said it, Eddie. The simplicity in a kiss. Keep it simple. <laughs> it's unbelievable that. You know, Mitch Henderson and crew, they recruit to that style. They identify players. And I know each year there's nuance to all the teams. And they're replacing some key guys. Ryan Langborn was phenomenal last year. And Keyshawn Kelman and Tosen of Woman. So good. And there's just, all right, who's next? Who's next in the line for the Tigers? And they have been so consistent over the years. Doyle battling Huggins for this loose ball. It'll stay this end of the floor with 321 remaining. Yeah, with only three, with only 321 back, and we take another look at this. Boy, I'll tell you, let's we'll see it. We've been focused on Caden Pierce's quickness to the ball. Check out Valencia here. He had an amazing block earlier in the game on Pierce. He's able to get up there quick as well. Yeah, I feel like we, we haven't got to see the best of Jarrett Valencia. Foul trouble has really been an issue for him today with those four fouls. Alaco's three makes it a 19-point game. And with only three minutes, a little over three minutes left in the game here, Princeton looking like they're going to move to 4-0 and on the season. Well, they have made things so difficult this afternoon for Xander Rice. And Rice fouled here with 2.58 to go and has a team-high 16 for Mammoth. But for Princeton defensively to do what they've done to Xander Rice, who just lit up West Virginia for 30 points, it really speaks more to what the Tigers are doing defensively than anything else. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier, right? Princeton known for the offense. How many years have it it's even have its own title, the Princeton offense? But yet, today, I think, Mitch Henderson is going to talk about the defense and right now being able to hold the Monmouth Hawks to just 54 points With under three minutes left to go in the game. I think if you would have told him before the game Hey, if that were the case, what would you think? And he say, I think it'll be a happy man Pull up jumper off the back of the rim that one from Davis 230 remaining Here is Bashir. We saw him knock down an outside shot earlier as Huggins pulls down the rebound with 218 remaining. Scott Valencia, another block. I I'm really, Dave, excited to watch Valencia over the course of this season. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some of Miss Henderson's thunder. We'll take another look at this here. Here's Valencia. Like, folks look very good and gave them credit and while you're only one and two you're one win over a high major program you know i think you take take some positives out of this game and start oh, building yeah. and getting ready for lehigh on tuesday night well, on a team in in lehigh that i believe was picked second in the patriot league so you the know. schedule doesn't get any easier for the hawks as coach rice trying to get his team ready for caa play and it's one of the more improved teams in, in the country is this mammoth team and Foul underneath with a minute 51 to go. Yeah, no doubt about that. I think we saw when we looked at the predictions for the CAA and we talked about the top half, especially Charleston and Tal and, and Hofstra. But I believe the Hawks picked that 11th. This team has a chance to finish much better than that as they'll continually get better and build their way into the CAA conference tournament. 
That's amazing. It's only November and we're already talking about the conference <laughs> tournaments. It's amazing how this game is so focused on getting to March. It, it's true. No doubt about it. It's where Princeton's made its its name over the years. That was Vernon Collins at the free throw line. Thrown away, Dalen Davis with the steal. Minute 40 remain. You know, when this... When these two teams met last year, it was a really one-sided Princeton win, and it, it turned into that here. It didn't start that way, you know, with, with how competitive this game was, but you just see the quality of the Tigers, right? Over the course of these 40 minutes, you know, Dave, they outscored Monmouth in the first half by 11, and then in the second half, he just saw the defense really settle in, bother Jack Collins, bother Xander Rice to the tune of forcing Mammoth into shooting in the low 30s. Yeah, and Princeton won the first half by 11, and they're right now winning the second half by 11. It was just solid basketball. And as we were just discussing, as now both teams emptied the bench, We'll play this last minute and a half for a chance for both coaches to look at some of the players that haven't played much early into the season. It's their opportunity to see if they can do something to build some confidence to get into that rotation for Coach Rice or Coach Henderson. Minute 25 to go, and Princeton with that 23-point lead. Tigers back at it on Wednesday. They'll take a pretty long car ride down to Old Dominion as that three-pointer is good for Monmouth freshman Quinn Peters, who gets his first bucket. The local Manasquan High School product gets a three-pointer. Wow, the same high school as Jack Collins. Oh, and a nice move the other way for Dalen Davis with time running down. But how about that next matchup? Princeton will have to travel all the way down to Old Dominion on Wednesday, Mammoth back here at home. We mentioned their next game against Lehigh Tuesday at seven o'clock. Yeah, and we talked to Mitch Henderson about that. Really struggling to get games. Nobody wants to play Princeton because they're really good. It's amazing how that works. You figure people <laughs> want to play Princeton, say, hey, we're playing a team that went to the Sweet 16 last year. And, you know, our fans don't want to come out and watch them play. And he talked about how much this rivalry here in state, being able to drive an hour across 195 and come play the Hawks each year, was very excited about this game and very nervous going into this game. That's a three-pointer for Derek Sangster for Princeton. And your point is held true both ways. You know, a handful of years ago when nobody wanted to play King Rice and Monmouth, Mitch Henderson was there, and they played during that run, too. It's it's just great for New Jersey and mid-major basketball, two teams not afraid to do that. Yeah, and that's the respect that Mitch Henderson and King Rice have for each other as they shake hands there. And the Princeton Tigers now 4-0. As Dave said, Princeton prevailing.